up, we pick up pencils and shoot a picture. I have a splashing good time in Arty Towers. And come on in, the water's nice, or is it? Hello there. Hi, we're back in the smart studio with loads more arty ideas for you. You know what, Kirst, I love this. It's a make using tissue paper, chucking on water that releases colour. We're doing an underwater picture, so we've ripped up tissue paper in lots of deep blues, light blues and greens there. Now, what I'm going to do is cut out a silhouette. Oh, nice. I'm not going to tell you what it is until okay. the very end. Well, I'm going to get arranging my tissue paper. Now, top tip here, if you do two layers, that works well, because we're trying to get as much ink out of the tissue paper as possible. And what I'm going to do with this picture is... I'm doing it as though we are under the water and the sun is shining through, so it's what we would see under the water. So I'm going to leave that space there blank, as though that's where the sunlight is shining down. Let's arrange these bits darker away from where the sunlight's shining through. And now I'm going to get that colour out of the tissue paper onto my paper. Mm. Just going to start adding water. Oh, I see. So hopefully the colour will saturate through onto the paper. Yeah, bleed out onto that paper. Yeah. Once you've left it for a few minutes for that colour to soak through, you can start to peel bits off and see the effect you've got. Ooh, lovely. <laughs> now, don't throw these bits away. I'm going to reuse these in a bit. That's amazing how the paint just comes through these. Yeah. What you can do is scrunch a piece off. Just kind of do a watery effect. Oh, right. I like that. There's any empty bits. Just fill them in. Yeah. Also gives a nice sort of broken surface, doesn't it? Yeah. And now, the last thing we need to do with my part of the picture is just crinkle these bits on at the bottom. Half the coral. Just gives a bit of depth to the picture. That's beautiful. Actually, Kirst, can I just finish it off by adding my silhouette of this diver that's just swimming up to the surface? Look at that. The last thing it does need is a smart frame. Oh, beautiful, Kirst. Nice one. <laughs> <laughs> Stop! I can't understand a word you're saying. You were making such a racket. I was worried about you. What have you got that on for? I'm trying to find the soap in the bath. I'm always losing it and I've got to find it before it dissolves. <laughs> I swear you're a lunatic. Kirsten, this is a serious soap problem. <laughs> I might be able to help you out though, I reckon. Hey, hang on, that's my sponge! Oh, now I've got some sponge and my soap. <sighs> What are you doing, Kirst? There I was having a bath, you come along and it was sponge. Ah, well, I'm going to make bath time more relaxing for you. I've had an idea to sculpt you a floating soap holder so you'll never lose your soap again. That's all well and good, but how long is it going to take? My bath's going to get freezing. First thing I'm going to do is map my design onto that. You might want to do that as well, actually. Oh, OK. Right. It's one of those weird noises, isn't it, that? Thanks for giving me the duff pin. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> OK. Right. Snip time. OK. You are actually making something and not just snipping away randomly, aren't you? No, I am. I'm, 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 I'm making a... What do you see? I feel like I'm doing a haircut. <laughs> In a weird way. Yeah. Oops. I think I've gone too far. You know what, Kirst? <laughs> <laughs> Only joking. <laughs> but I do need to do a bit more detail now with these little scissors. Oh, 
supposed to be able to tell what it is now, Kurt. Is it the Loch Ness Monster? <sighs> what are you doing? I hope this works. <laughs> Just a little something. Oh, yes. that's great. <laughs> There you go, finished. Is it a letter S or is it Spatis Swan? There we go. You see, your soap sits in there so you'll never lose it again. Genius. Right, I think I'm going to try this out now. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, Kirst. You can take that as well. Oh, yeah, lovely. Although the water's bound to be cold by now. Only joking. The water's lovely. Isn't it, Sydney? Time for us to splash out and take a look at your work in our gallery. And Isabel Clarkson has done this fantastic picture of a killer whale. And look, she's used labels and tissue paper to create the ocean. Isn't that wonderful? What's going on in Emma Thomas's underwater picture? I think that diver better watch out for that crocodile. Now, Bronwyn from Aberdeenshire has created this lovely sequence of a fish leaping into the water using pastels. Fantastic. Kate Wood's yacht picture is made from painted string. I particularly like the seagulls. This one, Curse, this is great. This is Kimberly Dunn from Stoke on Trent. Has given this picture loads of texture by sponging the sea and the shark. Thanks again for sending all your work into our gallery. If you'd like to see your picture on the show, send it to Smart, PO Box 5053, London W12 6AW. And don't forget to check out the online gallery. It's at bbc.co.uk slash cbbc. Then just click on art. I'm a fan of artist David Hockney, so I thought I'd paint a swimming pool in his style. And I'm going to use oil pastels. Now, let me start off by putting a swimmer in a pool. So let's put her about here. Just roughly sketch out the body. Right, let's put her in a bikini, a red one. That's it, lovely. Get a slightly darker flesh tone, work it in at the sides. That's nice. Let's put it under the leg there. start working in some hair now so let's do this hair billowing under the water maybe make that slightly darker let's think what should I do add a bit of red in there I think would be quite nice oh that's lovely look at that got to work on the pool now so I think I should put the edge of the pool roughly around there coming out about here like that. That's nice. Just put the top of it, mark the top of it. Start 
using a darker blue now to put in some water. I think what would be nice now is to give it a bit of a, a setting. So if I put some trees and bushes, maybe some hills in the background. A few over here, I think that's quite nice too. Just breaks it up a little bit. Nice darker blue there that I might just work into this area too. As all this area is in shadow, you see. Now I've got to work on the light reflecting on the surface of the pool. And to help me, I've got a sheet of clear plastic or acetate. Place it over the top like that, you see. Now, if I just work on this area here where the light's catching it and do these circles of white. And the shine of the plastic actually helps to give the illusion of the effect of water. There, look at that. What a great effect. I've just finish it off with a smart frame. Ah, perfect. David Hockney was born in Bradford in 1937 and is one of Britain's most celebrated living artists. Hockney was part of the British pop art scene in the swinging 60s and then moved to sunny California. His oil paintings of swimming pools such as A Bigger Splash are his best known works. A water splash only lasts a second but Hockney manages to capture the moment perfectly. He's obsessed with water and paints it in dancing shapes that look a bit like jigsaw pieces. He's superb at drawing from life, and double portraits are his passion. This one is Mr and Mrs Clark and Percy. Hockney recently spent a year painting a series of double portraits using watercolours. Unlike his oil paintings, which take months, each one was finished in a day. He works incredibly fast, as Jeez. every mark counts. Watercolour strokes can't be removed. Hockney's other love is his dogs. They're always around when he's working in his studio. He's captured them in dozens of portraits, as only their owner could. He's proud of his Yorkshire roots, and you can see lots of his work at Salts Mill Gallery, near his birthplace of Bradford. That's David Hockney. Wow, that was brilliant. I love that. That came a paintball. I had you, totally. Yeah, by the <laughs> way, where were you? Oh, where oh. was I? Where were you? Goodness me. Brilliant. <laughs> Cursed, I'd have got you in the last game if I hadn't run out of paintballs. Yeah, right. No, because my gun was empty, it was just firing out air. But you know what? That's given me a bit of an idea. Mm. Yeah, look, I'll show you. Yeah. Now, I'm going to draw a peacock. Can you burst some of those colours? Yeah. Mm. Oh, they're nice, bright colours. Now, you see, Kirst, talking about all that air, what I thought would be good was to blow air through a straw onto the picture and create feathers for this peacock, you see. Whoa. Good one. Shall I give it a go? Yep. Do you want to give it a go? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going a bit lightheaded. <laughs> Um, it's actually vegetable dye. It stays quite gloopy. There, look at that. Isn't that lovely? Yeah, very effective. We've 
still got tons of these paintballs left over. Oh, I'm too sore to have another game. No, no, no. I'm thinking we've got loads of different colours. Am I thinking what you think you're thinking? Oh, yes. As they say in the movies, let's shoot a picture. You got it. When I roll into the when I stroll into the when I bounce into the Cisco, Cisco. Right. I think this picture needs fine tuning now. I think you're right. Let's do it with the brushes. Let's tidy it up. Look at this, Mark. I'm just blending all the colours in in a swirl. Oh, lovely. Look, I'm using the wrong end of the paintbrush to make it spiky. Oh, nice one, Kirst. It's great. Do you know what I think my favourite bit is? What's that? Those clouds, because they're exactly how you fired them out. Yeah. And your cactus is good. Do you know what? I can't believe you got that in one shot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the shells look good as well, don't they? Yeah. They add texture to it. Crunchy. Swirly wrapping paper and book cover have been made using a technique called marbling. It's really, really simple to do. You need to get a tray, fill it with a couple of centimetres of water. Let's just add the last bit here. And then get some of these marbling inks that you can get in the shops. Now, these come with a pipette, so I'm just going to suck up a load of blue. You need to work quite fast. Pip it in. Let's do some pink as well. There we go. Starting to swirl round in the water and now I'm just going to sit some paper on top and hopefully catch that ink that's there. There we go. Sit it on. Let's see if that's worked. Peel it off. And there you have it. That's very pretty. I'm going to give that another go actually but using a slightly different technique this time. Let's add some yellow. What I'm going to do once I get the pink in again, is just use a pencil and swirl it all round a bit. Let's get some interesting patterns on the go in there. That's working nicely, isn't it? Now, let's sit the paper on again, see what I can achieve using a pencil technique. Oh, very pretty, I like that. That yellow is quite luminous. Let's leave that one to dry. What shall I do now? Add in a last little bit of this blue, I think. Ooh, that really splays out, doesn't it? And a bit more yellow. And now this time, let's really merge it all in and see what happens. I'll swirl it all up into a big schmaltzy mess. <laughs> Might have gone too far, but we're about to find out. Let's take that off, peel it off and see. Whoa, look at that. So you can really experiment and end up with paper for a practical use or just to make pretty pictures. What do you reckon, Mark? Nice one. Well, actually, I'm making a bit of a splash over here. As we're on a watery theme, I thought I'd give you a watery cartoon. Here we go. Let's start off with this diving board. Let's do it in a nice dark colour for you. Pinging up. That is a diving board that's in full boing. <laughs> it's the only way I can describe it. 
let's have this chap disappearing out of shot and then re-entering. Now, here's a good cheat. If you don't want to actually draw a person's body in full each time, especially if you're doing cartoon strips frame by frame, this is a quite nice idea. Just introduce the feet or a part of the body and let the picture do the talking. So let's have him hitting the water there. All around here is a huge sploosh. And actually to enhance that, we can write the words sploosh, but give it some nice watery writing. So basically all you're doing is just making it wibbly wobbly. Okay. Ooh. And then, I'm trying to think how you spell sploosh. <laughs> Here we go. Just to enhance that, let's put some drips on there as well. So it really looks soaking wet. Exclamation mark. There, there's a bit of fun. Bringing some life to your cartoons. <laughs> Kirsten, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh look, you put me off. I'll tell you what you can do, you can help me paint this. <sighs> I said you can help me paint this. Yes, you can. <laughs> Come on then. That's good. That's good. Nice bit of sponging, Kirst. Thanks. <laughs> on this side, aren't they? Yeah, dark on that side, the sun's coming down. That way. Right, I'm going to carry on this bit here. Lovely. How are you getting on, Curse? You all right? Yeah. This guy in there, Kirst, in that little panel there. Yeah. And that's it then. Okay, what do you want me to do? Right, next? trees next. This tree here. Oh, I like doing trees. Trees are lovely. Tiny little sponge up into that one.
Thomas von Kirst. It's been really, really hot. Sometimes people have been known to let off the fire hydrants to cool down. Oh, that's great fun, doesn't it? I'd love to muck about in that. Yeah, well, it's time for us to go off for a cooler now. Yeah, it's been a splashing good show, so until next time... <laughs> Bye! Bye. <laughs> Hello there! Oh, goodbye there. <laughs> 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 <laughs>